think? Yeah, 108. McCord. And engage. Yep. yep. Four o'clock. Right. You get on past this push kill. 185. Yep. What's up, folks? We're waiting to take off. We're boat number 108. Drew Ben, cord up there. And uh, we're gonna have some fun. We had a little rain coming in. Had snow Thursday. Yesterday was sunny. Temps are supposed to be in the mid 60s. Right now it's about 40. You're gonna have a breeze today. There's, I don't know how many boats there is. We're boat 108 and we're just sitting there waiting, waiting to fill out of here. It's, uh, the rain stopped, so that's nice. We had a little bit of, a little bit of showers move through this morning. And it feels good out here, actually. It feels good, man. We're ready to go catch some fish. We're going to be doing some clear water fishing, you know, jerkbait, A-rig, underspin, tie tech, that kind of thing. Um, so here we go, man. We're getting ready to take off. That nat set the national anthem, and we're just waiting around. Ready to go. Cigar. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. My camera was not working. Right off the bat, we pulled into this cove. We were fishing secondary point, and within like 10, 15 minutes, I was throwing a jig. Caught my first keeper. It was about a 17 inch spot. Beautiful bite. It was one of those bites where the line just goes slack, and you know he's just swimming through there and picked it up and started moving off with it. Got the fish in the boat, and man, it feels good to get that first keeper in the boat. And just as a co angler, I mean, it's a struggle out the back of the boat. Just getting one is valuable points. So I was able to kind of relax and really start focusing on fishing. Ben was uh, live scoping. You know, he'd found some fish back in this in this cove. He scanned several uh, secondary points and they seemed to be located just on this one single secondary point. So he was out there looking around. I was just casting towards a bank, just, just a small rock, typical type stuff. So that's kind of how the tournament started out. Um, after we left that area, we moved out do some main lake stuff, just fishing some points. Ben was doing some live scoping and I was casting uh, a jerk bait and a little swim bait, just trying to pick up some fish. Right Does he? Yeah. Cool. Throw him in there. Awesome. Good work, that brother. Not the one we saw roll. No. That was a big smallmouth, I bet you. Need my spook. There he's out there still. I just saw him come up again. That's right. Jerk bait. Get one on me, let me know when you get them close. Okay. 
I don't know, he's close. Large head. Okay, thanks. Large head. Yeah. Fat fish. All right. No. No, I don't think he's even close. Yeah. I think I was in the but don't he's damn, he's closer than I thought. Yeah, look at that. So he touches on that top. I'm gonna put him in there. I mean, he's super, super close. You got a little cold tag in there, so I'll use that. Just for catching a few fish, man. Swipe at it. <laughs> I had that thing killed for 15 seconds and it comes screaming up at me. But when, you, when it's on slack line like that, he's got their mouth in it. I should just let him in the fuck. He's just trying to guess if he's going to fucking hold it or not. I should just let him fucking go. That was stupid in there. I'm a guy who likes to fish. I didn't say I was no good at it. <laughs> Yeah? Nice. I don't know how big he is, but pretty big. Small man. Small man. Little guy. You wanna net him or not? No. Thanks though. No? Nope. Okay. Cute little feller. Same thing, I had to put it over the tree and stop it. Stop it, let them come up and get it. It was a slow bite and had to really move around and stay on top of these fish. One thing Ben told me watching the live scope that he noticed as the cloud cover went away. In the morning it was cloudy. It stayed cloudy till um, probably about 11 o'clock. So four, four hours of cloudiness, overcast conditions. But as that sun peaked out, the fish started getting a little more skittish. These offshore fish relating to standing timber off of these main lake points. And he was looking at them on the live scope but he was throwing an A-rig and they would shy away from the A-rig. You know, they would actually swim off from the A-rig. 
the swim bait, sometimes they would look at it, sometimes they wouldn't, and the jerk bait started to become a better player, just fishing it really, really slow, letting it soak when you got it around fish. As the day wore on, that was about the only thing that he could get bites on. I just kept throwing that jig, had a lot of confidence on that jig. The day before, Mike and I were pre-fishing and the jig was working very well for him. I was catching a few fish on it. So I just kind of stayed with that jig. You know, I'd pick up the swim bait and cast it around a little bit. But I had a lot of confidence as if we got in areas where I was close enough to the bank to where um, I could throw that jig and drag it around. That's what I stuck with. Well, for me, it might be time to bust the I'm gonna work my way out towards the here. And I'm gonna get out of here. Sounds good. Yeah, this spot's burned a hole in my mind. Yeah, because it's gonna... It's gonna no, clear off. It's gonna clear off eventually. It's starting to over here. Oh! What? I had one freaking swipe at it right by the boat. It's coming in hot too. It was a little one. There he is. It's a better fish. Stay down. Small mouth. No, I can't. It's fine. To the right here. Let's go right. It's Drop close, her. isn't it? Good. Good. Thanks, man. I got it. Appreciate it. The hook's kind of around the net. Yeah, with a black head. <laughs> it's a shaky head. That's all I had. No, I'm. <laughs> I don't think he's long enough. He's going to be close. I think he is. I hope you're right. I know. You build like a freaking tank, man. I love that bite. Love it. Nope. Really? Yeah. No, he's just all right. 14 three quarter. Fatty. Hey, we're catching some fish though. This is fun. discovered this in college because my boat broke down right here. No kidding. That's a good one. Did you really? Oh, no. I see him. Yeah, I see him. timber thank god instead of the you know like a traditional cedar tree like six pound floor on a leader knot i don't really like tying <laughs> not bad nice good work brother good work man you're almost there one away
he's gonna be right there. I think he's. I think he's. I think he's good. That might be an in mouth guy. Look at this little stripe on it. Huh. I think he'll go 15. He's really Damn, close. he's really close. Especially when I see he only had a tail hook to come around. It's gonna be just short. 14 7 8. Mm -hmm. No, he's 15, dude. All day. Yep. Fuck yeah, 15 Good hours. work, dude. Got you a limit. I'm pretty sure that's a mean mouth. He's got that horizontal bar on it. He's fish. He's got the suit. He's got the spot on the tongue. Mm hmm. Take it. Oh, that's a weight off the shoulders a little bit, even if two is. Whoa. I'll show you the two baits that were working for me that day. The key player was a 3 8 ounce jewel. This is the heavy finesse football jig. Great jig in the Ozarks. Um, got the little, this is actually a half ounce, but three eighths is what I was throwing. It's got the little football cut on it. It's got a flat head, got a nice hook, shorter weed guard. This is a great jig, like I said, in the Ozarks area. I was throwing a brown, I think it was a brown purple flash or something. This is a PB in smoke color. Both of these colors work great down in the Ozarks areas. Uh, just a yum. Crawl chunk trailer, the 3.25, a little bit smaller. They make a 2.75, 3.25, and a 3.75. So that 3.75 is more of a summer thing. This is kind of a, you know, more of a finesse type football um, size is that 3.25. And if you get really finesse, you can go to the 2.75. But the jig was the deal for me. It's what I weighed in most of my fish on. Um, the Loose Custom Speed Stick Rod. This is their football jig rod. It's a seven foot three heavy but it has moderate action really great i've thrown a lot of rods this is probably this is one of my favorite rods for throwing a jig for sure it just loads up nicely it's got a good hook set um it's got that it's soft enough action where they jump they, they stay pinned up 15 pound test fluorocarbon just to lose seven to one gear ratio reel just casting dragging it back counting rocks man just counting the rocks it was slow you'd go quite a long time without getting a bite and then you'd pull in an area and you catch a few bites. It was just about moving around. The other bait that I caught several fish in and I weighed one fish in was a jerk bait. This is just a Spro Mix Sticks spinning jerk bait. Um, purple Ghost Magic, I believe, is the color. Great kind of translucent color for clear water. Table Rock that day had probably a lot of the areas we were fishing were like 12 to 15 foot of visibility. So you need a more translucent jerk bait. It's got that white belly though. Um, we had overcast conditions. I think white is key in those overcast conditions. Those fish are looking up in that clear water and they see that little bit of white. It's just like the belly of a shad. These fish are feeding on shad out there. I'll um, suspend it out off these points. So Spromic Stick, once again, to lose, uh, this is the custom light topwater jerkbait rod. I believe it's like a seven foot eight. Um, I'm not sponsored by Lose. I just got a lot of their stuff because I really like it. But this is a very, very sweet jerkbait rod if you're looking for Good quality jerkbait rod. I've been throwing this thing around for probably four years and it is an excellent jerkbait rod. 10 pound fluorocarbon, eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon is what I like to throw. Same thing, just a seven to one gear ratio reel. And the other bait I was throwing was uh, just a little swim bait, like a 3.3 Kitek. Um, the Guggen swim bait's another good one. The Little Dipper by Reaction Innovations. Hogs Custom Baits makes a good swim bait, but just a small, 2.8 to 3.3 inch swim bait on a quarter ounce ball head um, was getting bites. It just, a lot of those shad were really small this year. You had a lot of just really like two to two and a half inch shad swimming around. That seems to be what those fish were keen on. Another really cool thing that I saw was there was a like a seagull loon relationship that I noticed that was happening. So loons are birds that feed on fish and they're out there floating around. They're looking down in the water when they see a school of shad, they dive down there and they bust them up. Well, all of a sudden you would see these seagulls swarming around the loons. So those loons go down there, they pluck off the shad, they wound some of them, they float up to the top and the seagulls come in and clean house. So we, you could see the seagulls, you could see the loons, and you knew that there were going to be bass underneath feeding on those shad. Kind of the loons push them down, the shad push them up, or the bass push them up. Big one, God, he's smoking. Uh, see him sitting there. 
God, they hit it so long. Crush it, huh? I thought that was going to be a day. Giant. <laughs> Yep. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Good job, brother. That's a nice one. Good work. Thanks. Oh, God. That was a long time coming. That'll keep, won't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. He's 16 and he's healthy. Cool. Want. Peace of mind, but I'm sure he goes. Got it. 17. Yeah, 16. Yep, cool. Thanks, man. Nice job. Thanks. Jesus. Working my booty off for that one. Yes, you did. God. Just on that gravel? <laughs> yeah, just out here. I don't know. Right on the flat in that pocket. Super freaking random. Right behind you, I'm gonna retire real quick. Use your scissors. <laughs> Starting, yeah, that's a better fish. He's green too. I think he's old school large enough sitting here. Wait to pull up into the pot. So there's like four of them in this creek. I don't want to sit out there because then I can't use the scope. We're going to kind of back up a little bit here. Good job getting him through those trees too, man. Oh, yeah, not just not just yep. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Close. Uh, close. I don't think so. It's just... <laughs> I got my fish truck with me today. Get off there. I don't oh, think so. He's nah, he does. He ain't. It's good to get a bite though. Does he touch? Are you kidding me? Yes. Yes. Good job, my guy. Yeah. Let's go. Right. Caught all four of your bikes today. Got lucky. All right, folks, midday report. It is a grind out here. We had a pretty good morning, and then we went through several hours where it was just super, super tough. You know, you got bluebird skies, we do have some wind, and the fish are starting to bite. My man up there has got five. I've got three, maybe four. I got a bump. I've got to bump this little squeaker. It touched a while ago, but I'm a little bit nervous about it. But, um, you know, just getting after it, keeping focused and, and never give up that, that cliche. And that's, that's true. We just pulled in one little area and we caught three fish, three keepers out of one little area. So we're bouncing around. We're, you know, we got less than an hour left before we got to head back. 108. I'll go grab a couple bags. Alright, thanks. Alright, I'll be up.
You need me to hold the bag? I can hold the bag. Appreciate it. Okay. I think they're all in good shape. Yeah, crazy, right? Yeah, it is. That's sure. Out easy. How's it going, buddy? Oh, doing good, man. Doing good. Hold it back for you. Here's five what? Hold it open. Okay. Four and four. Four thousand five ounces. Four and five. Back it up. There you go, sir. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Dave Montgomery, full bass, fishing as a collector from Jackson, Missouri. Once you have a time limit, nine pounds and one ounce, nine and one. Gabe currently in seventh place. Really? Wow. Thanks. I said seven pounds, it was nine. I'm Eight mad about that. Yeah. Yeah, they're better than I thought, man. Had fun, man. That last hour. Yeah. You just gotta keep casting, you know. Just gotta keep casting, not get. I haven't been fishing in a while. Yeah. Well, then, we can have a few more there, just looking at what I saw. What did you say? I was in seventh place or something? Yeah, seventh place, halfway through. <laughs> I might get a check. Maybe. Well, I think you would. Maybe. 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 Something. We're the halfway through the field. Yeah, that'd be nuts. Good work, dude. Yeah. Good work, dude. What'd you have? Uh, the table rock 12. Did you? You called 12, it. Five. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Really appreciate it. We got more videos coming. I'm fishing the entire division of the BFLs and the Ozark division. Had a tournament the very next day of this. Um, my boater didn't want me filming, so I didn't get any content. Um, but we have a couple more coming up this year. Great tournament. I ended up finishing in 12th place. I had a little over nine pounds. Ben was an awesome boater. We had a really, really good time. You know, he was live scoping, which can be difficult out of the back of the boat. And he was really vocal about what he was doing, kind of letting me know, you know, what areas the fish were in as he was live scoping them. But I never felt like I was at a disadvantage out of the back of the boat because we were around fish. And that's all you can hope for as a co-angler. You want to draw somebody that is cool, that you get along with, that is a good boat driver, um, that you have good chemistry in the boat. So you're going to have a fun day regardless of how the outcome is. And hopefully that they can be around fish. If they're around fish, you're going to have your opportunities. That's all you can hope for as, as a co-angler. Uh, fishing behind a live scope is different. Got to keep your head in the game, man. You got to keep your head in the game. There's going to be opportunities that will arise and you got to take advantage of them. Ben finished, I think, uh, in the 60s. He's had about 12 pounds. So good tournament for him. He got some good valuable points. Um, that's all I got for you. Like I said earlier, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate this content and subscribe to the channel couple more coming up got any comments any questions if you fished the tournament let me know how you did man it was fun it was a grind uh, i know that's a cliche word but it, but it was it was tough um it, it was not easy it wasn't anything like this tournament last year this tournament last year the fish were a little bit further ahead they were spawning you know that this tournament the water temps were like 50 52 last year at the same time i believe they were in the 60s low 60s but i do know that there were a lot of smallmouth that were actually on the beds and finishing up and the spots were starting to move up so 
completely different tournament than last year. Um, I, yeah, I think is the lake's probably at least two or three weeks behind what it was last year. But regardless, you have to adjust to those conditions, and it was fun. Caught enough fish to keep it interesting. I learned a lot. Got to see how to um, get out on those points and locate fish and pick them off with uh, the live scope. So that's all I got for you. Until next time. Thank you.